You've been speaking to the officials all night. What's your reaction to some of those calls in the first half? What's your reaction? You're watching the same game I am. Uh, I think you ought to comment on it uh, positive or negatively, whatever's running through your mind. Okay, thank you, Coach. Sean, I'll let you. Uh, vintage Mike Leach. I think that uh, answer uh, is an indication of how he feels. See, I'm going to get my grandkids one of these things so that they can, uh, you know, my daughter and her husband, they need to hear this because I went through years of random noises and rambunctiousness and broken toys and, and broken glass. Uh, we'll jump to Tyler Horka and now. A lot about the senior class, but last night they go through their last practice. I know a lot of them posted stuff about how emotional that was. What was that like for the last time for those guys, especially this class and what they've meant to the program? I think anytime you take your jersey off for the last time or practice with your with your teammates, um, you know that you start to go through emotions. There's some clo you got to get some closure. Uh, so we try and make that special for them at the end of practice a little bit, and, and it becomes an emotional experience for some of our guys. But uh, uh, you know those guys have been. The playoff game, they've been, you know, had some great moments here. So we're just looking for another life moment for them. Coach, you've been able to coach some really uh, talented quarterbacks in Connor Cook and Kirk Cousins. You know, I hope there's Bigfoot. I don't think there is. The reason I don't think there is because we found bones of dinosaurs and everything else, but we haven't found bones that I've heard of, of Bigfoot. It'd be fun if there's Bigfoot. I hope there's Bigfoot. Um, but uh, my guess is there is not. Aliens, I suspect there is. And I don't know that they're, um, <clears throat> they're little green men. And I don't know that they're specifically um, in our galaxy. I mean, because <clears throat> I look at it this way. Um, um, you know, first of all, like something about lightning strikes mud and then it sparks a beetle or, you know, and all that other business, you know. I don't happen to believe that. I, I, I take more the, the the biblical approach on this whole thing, which uh, <clears throat> to me, why only this planet? Why only us? I mean, I mean, if it can happen here. I mean, it, it, to me, it's always been naive. You know, um, on Earth, they say, oh, well, we're the only ones. We're, I mean, really, why? Have you been to the other planets? Have you checked out the other planets? I mean, to me, it makes it makes more sense that if it happened here, it happened somewhere else than it does that it only happened here. You know what I mean? And then and then we know that there's galaxies beyond our galaxy, and so um, whether there's one, whether there's another inhabited planet in our galaxy or not, and maybe some were formerly inhabited. Um, why would that mean that there, there's no inhabited ones in the other galaxy? We wanted to just see how honest Texas was, so we decided to write up a script, a dummy script. The challenge for Leach in the decoy script was to come up with complementary plays to the actual one. So if you're running a play to the left, you wanted the decoy script to say something was going to the right. The next part of the plot, call it the drop. Leach used one of his players pregame to deploy the decoy, so Texas would be sure to find it. He's like, I want you to run past their sideline, and as you're running up the tunnel, I want you to take the script and act like you're putting it in your belt loop, and let it fall out onto the ground. It was kind of the first real like uh, espionage I'd ever been a, a part of. One of their GAs is wandering by and, oh, what's this? A piece of paper. He looks at it and his eyes get kind of big and he sort of hides it and looks around to see if anybody saw him get it. Sure enough, the fake play script made its way straight to the Texas locker room. We all thought it was real because we thought that the alternative would 
it would be just so far-fetched uh, that, that somebody would go through the trouble to create a fake call sheet and actually leave it and drop it you know, where we would find it. Carl Reese takes it up to the press box. He starts studying the script, trying to figure out what defense they're going to call to match up the script. When I wasn't calling defenses, I was looking at it. And uh, it was a huge distraction. And on the second play of the game, the script says double reverse pass. We were trying to get them over there to the left. We hit Savage, and everybody was over to the left, and Savage was to the right. Go on first down, Heifel wide open is the freshman Savage. Touchdown, Oklahoma. It's very hard in the course of a football game to go back and see a wide receiver at any level of football that wide open. Going up top, Jackson one on one, turns around with a catch to the end zone. As the game went on, it was a catastrophe. By the time it was 17 nothing sooner, for a significant portion of this season, this team has felt like they were entitled to something just because the team before us won 11 games. And some of us participated in that. Well, that's fucking bullshit. And you see it happening around the country with some teams, too. You know, everybody says, what's wrong with this team? What's wrong with that team? Odds are it's something similar. Odds are it's something similar. You know, as a team, we act like, well, we're 11 and 2, and we just have to fill up. Fuck that. You know, as a coach, I didn't call one. Again, the, the plays I called last year, they're all last year. They're just that last year. As a player, any play you make, that's all last year. And I'll tell you another thing. Some of you motherfuckers didn't play a snap last year. I mean, if you're a receiver, you think you've got credit for Michael, one of Michael Crabtree's plays? You're out of your fucking mind. Michael Crabtree made that play. <coughs> Graham Harrell made that play. Rylan Reed made that play. And over there on defense, same thing. You know, you think that uh, you, think, uh, you made that play? No, no, Charbonnet made that play. Daniel Charbonnet. I mean, Darcel McBath made that play. Not you. Not you. I mean, none of that shit adds up to this fucking year. And that, none of it. But the thing is, it, had, it, it hadn't sunk in. And as coaches, we failed to make it sink in uh, for the duration of this year. Now, failed to make it sink in. Well, how, how do you make it sink in? Well, you start by probably cutting some people. Oh, uh, here go the coaches. Uh, uh, what's Mike Lee cheating? <laughs> that's, that's perfect. Again, oh, I love Mike Lee. And, and Pete. <laughs> what do you, if you're Chris Peterson. I'm not a particularly secretive guy. Um, with all due respect to those of you who do this, I never do this. I never talk here because, you know, they might read my lips. I've never met a lip reader, but evidently there's a lot of them out there because all these coaches cover their mouth. And despite the fact <clears throat> that during spring and in camp, they go ahead and call plays with their teams and run plays with their teams, uh, somehow the other team they're about to play is a lot smarter. And uh, so somebody, the lip reader, is going to immediately get the message of what you said in your terminology which could be very different than the other guys. But in your terminology, it's like the magic bullet. Okay, and then, and then he is somehow going to tell, say, the defensive coordinator on the other team, you know, what you uh, called, who's thereby going to get it to the play caller, who then <clears throat> clearly, without any error whatsoever, is going to convey that to 10 other players, and then they're going to execute with precision, immediately pouncing on whatever it is you just called. Okay, so um, if you want to know about that, you're going to have to ask somebody else. Um, <clears throat> yep. Oklahoma's louder, and ms louder. Texas is on the bubble. Nebraska was definitely louder. LSU's louder. I, ne I never went to Alabama. We beat Alabama, but it was at 
Kentucky. Uh, depending whether or not you add the cowbells, uh, Mississippi State's comparable. Uh, Georgia's louder. Florida's louder. Definitely that one end zone in South Carolina's louder. Tennessee's louder. Little Rock, Arkansas, that's the loudest place I ever played. Um, uh, entirely concrete structure. It's as if you had a football game in the neighbor's basement and all the kids were yelling louder than hell. And um, and you could tell when you were starting out, you know, you'd clap your hands and you'd hear it five times and yell, go, 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 hit, 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 hit. Well, then after, after um, you know, and you figure there's 45,000, you multiply that times five, that equals approximately 250,000. That's a lot of people, and there's no stadiums to hold 250,000 people. So 250,000 people are louder than 100,000 people. Mania, the mustache sensation has taken over Pullman and much of the country. How can you describe what he has meant to this team? Well, I don't know. I don't even think he had a mustache when I recruited him. I don't recall. And then uh, he's got more than a mustache, too. And I don't know why everybody only notices his. A lot of these kids have mustaches. Anyway. And now you do, too. You're rocking it. No, no I do, too. All right. Coach Leach, congratulations. Yeah, I, uh, I don't remember when I uh, did that article, but I, uh, yeah, I did have a pet raccoon. I would like to have a pet raccoon again. It's tough if you travel. Um, they're, they're quite a bit more maintenance-free than you would think. Um, they do like shiny objects. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I kind of would like to have a pet raccoon again. Um, but, you know, bouncing uh, around the country, it makes it tough. Um, and then, you know, and then you just, there's the time when they, you know, they hit uh, kind of raccoon teenage years and it's time for them to head off and uh, into the sunset. But no, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And uh, in some ways, uh, you know, uh, every bit as maintenance free as a dog or a cat, you know. A bunch of our players love to dance and the music's going and all that and then they try to get me to do it and uh, I was afraid they might dump something over my head if I didn't uh, you know like water and worst of all Gatorade so I figured you know I better comply which I did so I try I started out just trying to walk in place and that was clearly not satisfactory with and then uh, we, that wasn't dissatisfactory with my captors. I tried to bring the knees a little higher, and then I got the hands up to try to finish the deal off. And uh, and I do think I outdid Elaine on Seinfeld, but you know, as, as soon as I thought I was safe to stop, I did, and let uh, them have a great time. present a game ball. This guy works his ass off every day, uh, inspires everybody around here, Wade Sim. is going to lose her mind, your mother-in-law is going to lose her mind, your mom is going to lose her mind, several of your sisters and uh, female relatives are going to lose their mind, and, um, and they're, going to, they're going to barrage you with constant questions, what should we wear, and then, uh, which of course my answer was, I don't care, and then uh, what color should the invitations be, I don't care. Uh, what should we have for dessert? I don't care. Should we seat this this way or th that that way? I don't care. But see, I don't care is not satisfactory at all. And you're going to get caught in a catch-22, and I'm certain that you already have. And that catch-22 is, well, I want you to be a part of this too. Uh, so what color invitations? Um, 
All right, the blue ones. Well, I kind of like uh, I kind of like the tan ones. Okay, the tan ones then. Oh, you're just saying that because uh, 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 you want this over with. You're not even thinking about it, which is of course true. Uh, what do you want for dessert? I was thinking of strawberry shortcake. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, strawberry shortcake would be good. Well, what about the blueberry pie? Well, I like the blueberry pie. We could have the blueberry pie. Well, I thought you said you wanted the strawberry shortcake. And it's just going to go back and forth, and they're going to play keep away from you until uh, after you're married. There's no answer you can give that is going to be satisfactory or correct. And if you successfully uh, please a few of them, the others will still be, oh, well, I just don't feel like he's that interested. Yeah, okay, so, so you need to work late. Uh, go in the back room and read a lot of books. Uh, take the groomsmen out so you make sure that they march in just right and they know exactly, you know, these swell outfits that you picked out or whatever, however you're doing it. Um, and in the end, you'll wish you eloped. Uh, you need to find um, excuses uh, that they'll buy uh, to be as far out of harm's way as you possibly can. I let, I let the kids handle that. You know, I, uh, you know, I, all this button pushing and whatnot. You know, this is, uh, you know, I mean, you, you can just imagine based on what's happened in, you know, the last 15 years. I mean, there, there was, conversations won't happen. I mean, t 10 years from now, there ain't, ain't going to be anybody talk to anybody. You know, it's going to be this. You know, do you want to go out on a date with me? I don't know. What do you look like? Well, I look kind of like this. Okay, well, what are your interests? Well, what do you think my interests are? Uh, looking into this thing and typing into this, just like yours are. Well, yeah, no kidding. That's what everybody's doing. Yeah, that's right, virtually everyone. Well, where do you want to go? Well, what difference does it make? Because all we're going to be doing is looking in this machine anyway. <clears throat> Well, that's true. In the end, it's going to be tough to perpetuate this, uh, the species. There's no question about that. Well, we're going to enjoy looking in this box, and eventually we're all going to be extinct and die out. Well, that's how it ends, you know. <laughs> you guys good? Got your coffee. Yeah. It is early. How, well, how do you take your coffee? What's the best way to take your coffee? Well, coffee tastes terrible anyway, so don't put anything in it to obstruct the harsh, bitter taste. Then just put it down one sip at a time, you know? So it's just all about the effect. The taste, it's not about the experience at all. It's about no. the outcome. No, the experience is terrible. Other teams that try to throw the ball don't practice in the wind that we do, so therefore we can pass, they won't be able to, so we like that. Uh, 25 mile an hour winders, winds are ideal, but uh, maybe higher than that, but we'll still fight through it. Saturday, 71 degrees, uh, partly cloudy, and then for those of you that don't have calendars at home, Sunday will be the first day of May, and uh, so you might circle that. Uh, it says fireworks, uh, fireworks late, so later in the day uh, could be th some thunderstorms, but you know this is after all West Texas, so I wouldn't count on it. Now on Monday it says bad stuff, serious storms. Well, you're going to be dead in 100 years anyway. Live dangerously. I would go opposite of that. I mean that's just too strong, too much. It says bad weather, and the and and the and the, the, the thing on the screen there is just a little too sure of it for my taste. Uh, I, me personally, expect sun. Go out there, expect sun, have a good time, and uh, if you run into the bad stuff, don't let that hamper your day. Don't be a coward, stay out in it, still enjoy the day. Then the temperatures go back up the remainder of the week, and uh, we got some clouds uh, lurking around there. Who knows what they're going to do, um, but uh, it'll be extreme one way or the other. It'll probably be hot 
or else it'll probably be windy, or who knows, hail. And I actually kind of look forward to hail. My favorite weather pattern happens to be uh, when it rains mud. Dust comes through, rain on top of it, it rains mud. Now I know that people that have been here for a while don't like that particular ph phenomenon as well as I do, but think about it. How many times in your life are you actually gonna see it rain mud? I love it, I go out there, I look at it, I watch it. Worst thing about it, you have to wash your car. Who cares, it's worth seeing, trust me. Okay, rest of the week, pretty normal stuff. In the 80s, which is great weather, and uh, overall, we have great weather here in Lubbock, Texas. And if you don't believe me, look at the other 80% of the country, and uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. This weather report here, what do I know? I'm a football coach. <laughs> I suggest you go out and do what I do. Get out of bed, go outside. Then you know. It's a good win. There's a lot of people. It's like Woodstock, except everybody's got their clothes on. <laughs>I mean, how is it possible that you could actually have a playoff format in college football? Well, gee, I don't know. How about high school from a major state? Let's say Texas, Florida, or California. Let's see how they do it. Okay, let's see. These guys, you know, they win a certain number of games. They have a qualification. Okay, now, boom, they're in the playoffs. But they don't have just two or four teams or something. Hell no, because they want everybody to have fun and enjoy this playoff system. Okay, now the suspense is really starting to get thick because, you know, Division Two might do it differently. No, in fact, they don't. They do it exactly, exactly, boys and girls, like Division Three does. And then now they've changed the initials because in this era of political correctness, they love to change initials and make it proper to say things one way instead of another. And I forget what the initials is. But then they go to one double A. Okay, at one double A. How do they do it? One double A. One double A. I mean, because that's getting closer to us and we're really sophisticated because we're major, major one A. How do they do it in one double A? You know what? They have a playoff format and they play it and they figure it out. And, and, and then, um, okay, 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 well, that's, they're all below us. Okay, what about above us, the NFL? And everybody, you know, that just makes you feel good to roll those initials off your, uh, it's like Huckleberry Finn said, some days I just have to swear to get a good taste in my mouth. Okay, so then NFL, now that makes my mouth feel good because that's the best and they're the top. Let's see here, how do they figure out their champion? <clears throat> well, they in fact organize a playoff system. And how many teams are in there? A hell of a lot more than four. And then they sort it all out, and then <clears throat> they, <clears throat> they have one battle after the next, and at the end, guess what? They sort out a champion, and it's called the Super Bowl. And there, there's not interest diminished because people are captivated by the playoffs, and the biggest sporting event every year in the history of the world is the Super Bowl. Okay, any questions? Coach, I know you have strong thoughts on weddings. Um, I'm in the middle of planning one right now. Do you have you any are? advice for me? Who yeah. are you marrying? His name is Trevor. Okay, yeah, well, <clears throat> I'll have to you set up a meeting and I'll talk to him. Um, okay, so uh, where's Trevor from? He's from Florida. What does Trevor do for a living? He works in sports as well, covers football. He does what? He covers football as well. Really? Well, I don't know. We'll keep a close eye on it, but whatever you and Trevor decide, I would kind of keep it on the down low, which you failed to do that. Trevor was probably planning to, but you didn't. Uh, so go ahead and uh, uh, don't, don't say anything else about it, but as soon as the season's over, or even an off week, go elope. Trust me on that. Go elope. Because uh, basically every female in the family is going to terrorize you guys until it's over. Once it's over, I mean, they'll be upset for a few days, but it'll be over. And then, you know, you cruise away, uh, along, have a happy marriage, have a happy life. I'll pass along the message. Thanks, Coach. Congrats okay. on the win. Trevor, unless he's crazy, is totally on my side. And trust me on this. <clears throat> if Trevor doesn't uh, have the sense to do that, 
tell him to call me because, I mean, he needs to do trust. I, t I told all my kids, I'll give you $10,000 extra if you elope. So far, they haven't done it, but I would, too. I'll have him call you for sure. All right. But, thanks, Coach. All right, thanks. I didn't think we played well. I, didn't, you know, I didn't think we played well at all. I'll tell you one thing that they do that gives us trouble. We've got some guys that are afraid of the jer uh, jersey that says Alabama on it. We spend a lot of time frightened of their jerseys. You know, you you want to you want to you want to scare some of the guys on our team. Put an Alabama jersey on it. It'll scare the hell out of them. And I'm genuinely fearful that on our team, if, if, if me and the other coaches don't get them right, um, <clears throat> that about a generation from now, um, their kids and their grandkids won't have hands. You know, because, um, you know, f from a lack of use, those hands just disappear. I mean, and, and maybe it'll be like this, like those dinosaur hands like this are, you see. And, and you know, you got like a Tyrannosaurus Rex who's, Clearly good at eating things, big old jaws and all that stuff, fairly athletic and run. Well, his hands are like this. And, and, you know, and I think we took a very, very, very uh, big step as a team, which we have to correct this. We have to correct this because, um, you know, I think that uh, in the end that it's going to be best for all these guys uh, that they have good hand development and that they don't evolve to where they don't have hands, okay? But we definitely um, didn't use ours, and so there certainly wasn't any genetic reinforcement on our part um, that we should maintain our hands. I mean, and I don't want all of a sudden, you know, guys driving across this country, and then they get to Starkville, Mississippi, and all of a sudden there's these athletic-looking, friendly guys, because we have great guys, that don't have any hands. And I hope that that's not the case. But that's where we're headed right now, and we're going to try to get that fixed in this off week. Okay, <clears throat> let me think here. Well, first of all, there should be more sharks if you're by an ocean. That tiger at LSU that's a live, real tiger sitting in there in some metal structure, which clearly he could rip his way out of if he wanted to, even half wanted to. That's an awesome one. Uh, the Buffalo at Colorado, that's an awesome one. There's a place in Kansas called Pitt State, and I used to see it on film. We didn't play them. They're called Pitt State, and they're the gorillas, and there should be a lot more gorillas for um, mascots. Because think about it, a gorilla can whip a lot of stuff, you know. So then the, the students and everybody, um, when it came time for the opponent to come out, they play Welcome to the Jungle, just blaring, just blaring Welcome to the Jungle. Then the visiting team would come through the tunnel, and they'd all be hurling bananas at the visiting team. You'd see bananas everywhere, bananas bouncing off helmets, bananas just flying through the air. Uh, and that was Welcome to Pitt State because you're about to play the gorillas. How about that? First of all, what kind of mythical powers does a sun devil have? We've got to consider that. I'm going to say the wildcat's out. Uh, the Trojan, is he, does he have a horse or is he on foot? Does he have a bow and arrow or just his sword? The Bruin, definitely formidable. Another bear up there at Cal. Uh, the tree, I imagine that tree's going to get chopped down. Or it's unless we're going to go with the bird and somebody might get pecked or something, I don't know. The duck might lose interest and just fly away and get out of there, which may be good advice under the circumstances. Uh, the husky, no chance. The beaver, well, we'll see how long that beaver can hold his breath. Um, the ute, again, we're back to, uh, is he on horseback? Does he have a bow and arrow? Did he trade for a rifle? I mean, you know, because if that youth's got a rifle, there's some definite problems. You know, you'd have to get one of those Harry Potter activists to read up on how you kill a sun devil because there's a lot of uh, 
outside stuff there. Just as far as a beast alone, uh, a buffalo is going to be pretty hard to tangle with. I mean, a, bu a buffalo is utterly outstanding. Did I leave any of them out? The cougar will find a way. Uh, Clear-minded and crafty, a combination of stay out of harm's way and and uh, <clears throat> and attack when you get your uh, your chances or your openings. We talked about on the broadcast how you hate candy corn. What's your I favorite Halloween candy? Candy corn. I mean, I completely hate candy corn. Uh, <laughs> uh, when I was a kid, well, gummy bears, let's see. Uh, gummy bears for sure. Sour or regular? Uh, um, the, the, the hair bow. It's got to be the hair bow ones. And then uh, the other thing I like is uh, is when they used to have the, the uh, sprees in a box. Outstanding. You have to go to the dollar store to find it, but I do. And then the latest, the, the latest, you know, there's still candy innovation, although a while back I found that Europe had better candy than we did overall because <laughs> they have gummy everything. And then, uh, but uh, um, the, uh, you know, they have those Nerds Clusters, which is new. With the gummy. Yeah, which is good. The Nerds Clusters is good. And then if you go chocolate, uh, probably Almond Joy. Love it. Hopefully you'll get some of that next week. Yeah, yeah we'll see. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. coaches we failed uh, to make our coaching points and our points more compelling than their fat little girlfriends now their fat little girlfriends have some obvious advantages for one thing their fat little girlfriends are telling them what they want to hear which is how great you are and how uh, how easy it's going to be and how you know uh, you know, we had, we had, you know, we had a whole bunch of people. Everybody wanted to win the football game, but nobody wanted to play the football game. Well, I, I mean, that defies every level of uh, work ethic that exists with regard to football. And uh, as coaches, we have to solve our failure on uh, on reaching them, and uh, the players have to listen. And I, I'm willing to go to. Uh, fairly amazing lengths to try to make that happen. I don't know if I'll be successful this week or not, but, but you know, I am going to try, and there will be some people inconvenienced, uh, and if it happens to be their fat little girlfriends, too bad. Sixteen left on the clock. March down and score. I mean, you know, it's, uh, yeah, all the a &M, uh, tech games, especially up here, are uh, exciting. This was no exception. Glad we were able to win. I really didn't think we played a particularly good second half. We missed some opportunities the first half, but glad to get out of here with a win. This is a tough place to do it. And, uh, you know, once in a while, a pirate can beat a soldier, you know.